Is your apple tree giving you skinny fruit, lopsided fruit, or even no fruit despite lots and lots of blossoms? These are all pollination problems, and I'll help you sort it out. The blossom is the tree's mechanism for obtaining new genetic material in the form of pollen from other trees for making new varieties and increasing diversity, which helps the species survive in different climatic conditions and locations. As such, it has both pollen producing and receiving parts and depends mostly on insects to do the legwork. It uses both nectar and pollen as the incentive to get them to go through all the trouble. The pollen producing part of the blossom are the anthers, which resemble pale yellow hot dog buns. They darken to a tan color as they mature and dry out. I counted 18 to 19 of them per blossom on the ones I checked. Yeah, I know, too much time on my hands. The pollen receiving part is called the stigma, which resembles a sticky golf ball on the end of a stubby stem. And there's always five of these per blossom. And so, pollen from the hot dog bun, anther, is spread to the stubby, sticky stigmas, which you'll remember forever now on. Let's take a blossom and cross section it, then zoom in so you can see the inner plumbing. The stubby, sticky stigmas have pipes inside of them running down to the ovary at the base of the blossom where there are five ovules, or seed specks as I call them. If pollen is deposited on the sticky stigma, it travels down the seed speck and pollinates it, and it becomes a seed, with the ovary becoming the core of the apple. If you look at the calyx end of the apple, you'll see the remains of the blossom, and sometimes there are even anthers still attached. Now, to maximize the chances for survival, the seeds in the core need to be spread as far as possible. Thus, the seed core is surrounded by a sweet, crunchy, juicy apple, which makes it attractive to mammals. The seeds themselves are designed to be eaten and pass through the gut of the animal unharmed to be deposited a day later somewhere else where hopefully it sprouts the next spring. Now, if you're getting some lopsided apples like this one, it has to do with the stigma tubes. On some apples, there are five individual tubes from the sticky stigma running down to the seed speck, and each tube pollinates two specks. On these varieties, each of the five stigmas must receive viable pollen for the apple to form the maximum of 10 seeds, which results in the fattest apple. If only one of the stigmas gets pollen, then only one set of seeds will form. The problem with this is that the apple is always fatter around where the seeds were formed because the seeds controlled growth hormones. You see this apple is only the right side was pollinated and has seeds and is fatter, while the left side has no seeds and is skinnier. You can see from this why pollination is so important. You may get apples without pollination, but pollinated apples will always be larger. However, some apple varieties have what I call a mixing valve just before the ovary. In this case, even if only one sticky stigma receives viable pollen, the mixing valve allows this pollen to get to all the seed specks, resulting in a fully pollinated apple. The blossom must receive this viable pollen within four or five days after opening or it will shrivel up and drop off. To complicate things even further, not all apple pollen is viable. There are some varieties called triploids that have a third set of chromosomes that the apple really doesn't know what to do with and they are sterile and cannot pollinate themselves or other trees. They must have a pollinator of another viable variety to produce fruit. If you're getting lots of blossoms but no fruit, your tree is probably a triploid. But there's a reason we put up with triploids as they are vigorous, productive trees with good disease resistance. Some of the more famous triploids are Bramley, Yellow Newton Pippin, Mutsu, and Winesap. Some apple varieties need pollen from a different variety to produce seeds, but their pollen can also pollinate other varieties. However, if the other variety is of the same family or offspring, it won't work as well. For example, King David is an offspring of Arkansas Black, and you sh should not be used as a pollinator for Arkansas Black. And finally, there are some varieties that will pollinate itself in just about any other apple. Granny Smith is one of these and is an excellent all-around pollinator. It will produce good crops even with no other trees around. But to cross-pollinate, the trees have to be blossoming at the same time. Blossom periods are generally categorized as early, mid-season, and late, and there are charts listing the blossom periods of different varieties. So how come you don't see these charts on our website or hear me talking about them? The reason is that in a warm climate, these charts, along with ripening charts, get thrown out the window. The trees do all sorts of weird things. First of all, in a cold climate where the trees get sufficient chilling hours, all the blossoms pop at once and you get a full bloom. 
then in a warm climate, the lack of chill greatly extends the blossom periods, as illustrated by this photo. You see that even though there are lots of blossoms, there's still a lot of buds on the branch tips that have not opened yet. This makes the blossom period in a warm climate much longer, sometimes extending five or six weeks or even longer. There can be blossoms, grape-sized fruit, and golf ball-sized fruit all at the same time on the tree. This makes the overlap between the varieties much easier, as if you have several varieties, there is bound to be something blossoming at any one time. For instance, I'm making this video in mid-September, but I was still able to go out into the orchard and find some blossoms to dissect for the close-up photos. The main exceptions to this rule are the three super low-chilled varieties, Anna, Dorset Golden, and Shell of Alabama. Their blossom period is so far spread from all the other varieties that only they will pollinate each other. And pollination is critical on these varieties. Look at the difference between this unpollinated and pollinated Anna, and also between this unpollinated and pollinated gold, Dorset Golden. It was the same amount of water, fertilizer, pruning, and spraying to produce either apple, but the yield is much larger with the pollinated apples. Insect pollinators play a big role in the orchard, and if your weather is pouring rain over much of the blossoming period, you're not going to get much of a crop. Heavy rains can also knock the petals off blossoms, making them hard for pollinators to find. In our part of the world, most of the pollination is done by honeybees. They're not the greatest pollinators, however, because they're usually only after nectar. If you look at this photo, you can see the bee is off to one side of the blossom, gathering the nectar. It may only spread pollen to only one of the sticky stigmas, and it may require multiple bee visits for the blossom to be completely pollinated. Other native bees, however, are better pollinators because they are exclusively after the pollen and crawl all over the blossom to get it. Bumblebees are especially good pollinators. They have these fat heads that they really mash into the blossom, spreading the pollen everywhere with just one visit. Now some commercial growers don't take chances with insect pollinators and they gather the blossoms by hand and rub them against a sieve to collect the pollen. It is then strained and applied to the orchard blossoms by various ways, by atomizer, by paintbrush, and nowadays by a glorified leaf blower using packets of commercially produced pollen. The bottom line is that in a warm climate, if you have several varieties within proximity of each other, you probably won't have to worry about pollination. And you could always graft a branch of some pollinator variety onto a tree if it's problematic to pollinate it. Now down in the description, I've given you a link to a document written by real scientists who give you the proper names for all the silly plumbing names that I've given all these parts. As always, like and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. I'm Kevin Hauser with the Cuffle Creek Apple Nursery.